All right. We're going to talk just focus on genomics this morning and I'll uh, and have a look up uh, the records, the new and light program on the program I'm going to start. We have Paul Fernandez from Zoetis and then uh, Lindsay Warden from Holstein is going to show the, uh, demonstrate the light program for those that aren't as familiar with it. And it's a great program. I'm using it just about every day. So anyway, uh, starting out, I don't know, I had a slide because it's a nice slide, but these cows both are uh, low genomics. They're not doing <laughs> The red cow's 94, about 1,500, and then the, the Jasper, there's 92, and oh, she's only like 1,300, and I think, I know we didn't do her, but she's imputed, you know, so she got done. But let's start off with, uh, these are basically slides you can get from the USDA or the council website. You can see where we're at here. Um, we're at the end of the year. Here's Holstein females, 569,000. Holstein males, 146,000. And on this left side is all the different chip types that we've gone through. Some of, you know, the 50Ks were first and then they went to the 3K. Now these here, the newer ones at the bottom are up to like 16K for the low density ones. So, and then you can see how the other breeds, their numbers that they have. Certainly the other color breeds, not near as many. Jersey's the next closest here with the uh, uh, females and males around 90,000. So. Um, it's the different chip types that we do have a lumen chip. The Holstein Gordon staff was able to uh, go to Zoetis office last week and that's the lumen chip that the DNA is spread on and put through the reader. And so we passed that around. Uh, it's this little wafer and uh, we were there. It takes only uh, three days to get, uh, once they get received the stuff, to put out to get the information and they send it off to uh, the D uh, council web uh, database to uh, formulate the, the numbers. And so I know with the weekly runs now where it's close as, I think uh, two and a half to three weeks you can get results back as some of us we've had. So, mm -hmm. all right, and of those, all those numbers, this is how they have it split up between the 50K and the lower density chips. But see the old is the ones that are uh, included in the evaluation. So that's what's building up our numbers to give us uh, the genomics, the genomic information. And so you can see on the old males, 26,000, you know, and they went back all the way for the last 40 years, you know, and got all the old genomics. And uh, in the females, is only 26,000. And then on the lower density, 85,000. So this 140,000 is basically what's uh, building the database and putting all the values on our genomics. And then it's able to give us the numbers for all the young ones. And you can see how many they've imputed to date, in which they started at a later date, but that's, uh, uh, that's how many we've done, 3,200 old cows. Pat, can I ask a quick question? Yes, go ahead. When you're looking at the imputed uh, genomic uh, results, have any of those animals been, been tested to see if there's that much variation, or how close is that? I haven't heard, I haven't heard of uh, any instances where they've gone, you know, and did them. You know, when they said, uh, the USDA guys, they had said that if they had five, just five offspring, that they could get within 95%. And so I would assume that any one that they did it on a 50K would be within, you know, be that close. But uh, anyway, those, uh, all those old, old uh, genomics on those old cows goes to empower uh, these plots. It puts values on each chromosome. You see the, the 29 chromosomes plus they've got a P and an X. And uh, some are very distinctive, like milk. You can see on uh, 14 is very strong and 5 and 6. And then others, and it's also fats very strong uh, on several, just several genes. And so those are a little more, they said, definitive compared to like uh, productive life where you got one spread all over the board and of course involves different traits as well. And, uh, and there's another one for stillbirth. You know, again, you know, not as strong as markers, but sort of pretty much spread across the board. So, uh, and, and, and uh, but everyone that goes in powers this and, and gets plotted on the same deal on each, each and every trait. And then, uh, when you send a cow, here's a cow, we're in plant and train it. She's around 2,100. But this is, uh, a plot on net merit. And so every, you see the same uh, chromosomes across the bottom, the 29 chromosomes and the X, 
And uh, if you look here on the bottom, the, what they're saying is the purple line is what she got contributed from her sire, and the orange line is from, from the mother. And down here it'll tell you what her total genomic value on that mare is 412, and then 304 from the sire, 108 from the dam, and then also they say including some of the pedigree information, and it uh, brings it to a 406, which was her net merit. But the, again, every single trait gets mapped out like this on the cow. So you got, you know, fat, productive life, protein percent, and all, every one is uh, to get the value of all the traits. And then, so here's mobile. Same on the sires, the same thing, how much from the dam, how much from the sire. And that, when they're now they're talking about genomic matings, and that's where they're talking about using the maps of the sire and the dam, and trying to match up where like moguls we say on this chromosome, and where you're strong, and then matching up with a cow that has the opposite. Maybe they're strong in this one and is weak in this one. So that's what, uh, one of the uses maybe of the, these charts. For every single trait, again on bulls, cows, are uh, mapped out in this way. And this is, all the different traits that they're uh, doing the genomics on, this is how they're split up. And there's five on production, 17 on a type linear, 11 on fertility, then they do a, the net merit index, it was really a combination of all these, but uh, they do one, do one straight on, uh, on net merit. Uh, you know, that's the, the index from uh, USDA comes up with their, their index, so. And then what's interesting is uh, all the different countries that are running their genomics through our system. And, uh, and some countries don't have their own, you know, for example, uh, India, India, and also Brazil. I know Brazil's got a bunch more coming in. They said they had 3,000 samples come in in January, so their number's gonna increase greatly. But, uh, but these are all the different countries. And even though, like, Europe has their own system, they're also running it because they wanna, they wanna keep the eye, because that's the, the worldwide standard for, uh, measuring how well their cow pedigree is, how good the individual is. And so, uh, and I'm not sure what countries like, you know, Thailand would, would use with the U.S. genomics, but it is interesting all the different countries that are running on our system. And, uh, and then also, it was also interesting, I brought up the slide, because it's not, I thought it was just like three laps, but we also, these are labs approved by the, the council that can run the genomics. And uh, so the chips will be sent to these labs and then they, they send the information on to the council to get the uh, formulation of genomics. So you can see not only the ones in the US, but there's one in, the, in, in uh, England, one in Ireland, and then uh, the ones in the US, GenSeq, Genetic Visions, and Zoetis. And this is, of course, the Canadian one. But, so all these are approved by, to run the, the U.S. Uh, on the U.S. format. All right, that's the basic. I'm going to take a break here, and Paul's going to run through and show some uh, interesting stuff that the U.S. has been bringing up. The genomic maps, the chromosome maps, those